Welcome to the Fantasy Football Sackos Podcast with your hosts, Jason Shellcross and Alex Krobe. Let's go! Fantasy Football Sackos. What are we on? Week seven? I'm lost. And we're in the mid season. This is fantastic. Alex, how you doing, buddy? How's uh, how's your week going it, so far? It it is week seven. I'm happy to report to everybody, our faithful Sacco listeners, that I am eight and sixteen in my four leagues combined this year. Um, so I'm winning at a at a miraculous thirty three percent clip. I will also say that I've had losses by the following: point seven two, point six, one point three two, one point one. Uh-huh. 1.64 and 0.18. <laughs> it's been six weeks and I have six Does losses at me? by less than by less than two points. So if we just turn that around and let's just say I win all of those, then I'd be 14 and 10. And that's really the philosophy I'm taking into this week is the power of positivity. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing a little bit better than you are there, buddy. Okay. Uh, except- it's like, hey, do you want to start a fantasy football podcast? Sure. I'm usually pretty good at fantasy football. Eight and 16. Fantastic. Uh, yeah. I'm I'm doing great in every league except for a league that I won last year. And I am now in last place in it. And they expanded the benches like crazy this year because of COVID. And everybody in the league has thought that the most prudent or most, I don't know, the best use of those extra spots would be to just pick up every quarterback that there is in the league. And so, (laughs) and so I already started, started the season with streaming quality quarterbacks. And now my quarterback was Ryan Fitzpatrick, but then he lost his job. Oh no. So now, now I I had to burn the number one waiver claim to pick up Tua because there is, there was no quarterback left and it's a, it is a 12 team. It is a 12 team, one quarterback league. There is not even a super (laughs) flex. It is not two quarterbacks, but there is nobody. I like it was. I am so frustrated with that league and everybody talks crap. I was getting trade proposals. The trade proposals I got Aaron Rodgers for Josh Jacobs and Derrick Henry. That's what that's what they wanted for quarterbacks. They're like, oh, come on, buddy. It's that or two. Uh, what do you want? So uh, shout, I'm rolling with shout out to one of my good friends, uh, Kellen Kafka, who uh, I have a bet with Aaron Rodgers that he will not throw for 4,500 yards and 35 touchdowns. I'm going to win that one after they got their ass kicked by Tampa Bay last week. So thanks for the 50 bucks. Appreciate you. They got their teeth kicked in. Um, uh, right. real, real, well, real quick, be- before we get into, into this week, I do have um, just wanted to recap. We So last week when we did this, our wonderful th- Thursday episode of rankings debating, um, just kind of wanted to run down what our rankings were last week and just tell you who won some of them. So here we go. Jonathan Taylor, Jason had ranked at four. I had at 19. Jonathan Taylor finished seventh. James Connor, Jason had Ooh. ranked at 12. I had at four. He finished fourth. Ding. Uh, Miles Gaskin, Jason had at 13. I had at six. He finished fifth. Ding. Um, that's all Josh RB1 Allen. territory, but go on. Josh Allen had uh, Jason had ranked as the number one overall quarterback last week. I had him at five and I was much closer. I have no idea where he finished, but it was he was bad teens. Uh, Deshaun Watson, Jason had four. I had at 16. He finished um, or sorry, I had him at 18. That doesn't make it any better. He finished number one last week. So you had him at 18. That's a double ding for Uh, your boy. I almost just skipped that one. Um, Kirk Cousins, Jason had a 13, I had six. <laughs> he finished at seven. Hey, transparent. I'm honest. If nothing else, con- call me honest, Alex, right? If At least I have honest that going for Alex. me. Uh, Cam Newton, uh, Jason had 12, I had a three. He finished ninth. 
Evan Ingram, uh, Jason had it 11. I had it five and he finished 22nd. Um, Ouch. Jeez. Mike, Mike Evans uh, did not finish in the top 50. And we both had him ranked as a. Uh, uh, I said it could happen. Two. Yeah, I did. pointed out the game scores with and without Godwin and said, this is what happens when Godwin plays. He does nothing. Guess what? Godwin's played. He did nothing. You have to be terrified of starting Mike Evans moving forward with Godwin on the field. Uh, last one. The rest of them don't really matter. Uh, we talked about Chase Claypool, who um, I've gotten mercilessly just destroyed on Twitter and YouTube. And hey, thank you all so much for your lovely comments. You're still wrong. He got lucky and scored a touchdown. Uh, he finished the weekend as wide receiver 10. Um, I had him ranked at 46 and Jason had it at 34. Um, he only had four targets last week. Again, fading Chase Claypool. But that's not what we're talking about this week. Jason, who you got? Chase Claypool should be starting in all 12 team <laughs> leagues moving forward every week for the rest of the season. Alex is crazy. Tune him out. Thank you. Uh-huh. So we are switching it up. We're trying to see what the people like here. We're doing something a little bit different uh, this week. Again, we are doing uh, well. If you go to our website, the fantasy football com, you will see that. Uh, Every Thursday, Friday, we put out a hot or not article, which is basically our version of a sit start. And so we've never done a sit start show before. So that's what this is. So we're going to be going through quarterbacks, running backs and pass catchers that we are high and low on at all of those positions. And so with that, let's just dive right in. Uh, Quarterbacks that Alex and I are high on this week. Um, I'm going to start off, Alex, if you don't mind, uh, the Please number do. one quarterback I'm looking f- the number one quarterback I'm looking forward to this week is, uh, Kyler Murray. I really think that he showed that he could be like a top three rest of the season, uh, quarterback granted, he, you know, he was usually drafted there in most drafts. Um, but he goes up against the Seahawks this week. The Seahawks are giving up the most passing yards a game per game at 370. And they're also giving up the most completions per game at almost 29 pass completions per game, which is just crazy because that's almost more than, you know, several teams even attempt a game. So I'm just really looking forward to see uh, what Kyler is able to do against the Cardinals um, or excuse me, against the Seahawks. So are you uh, do you think he's going to have a good week? He should. Um, I don't see why he shouldn't. I mean, doesn't everybody have good weeks against the Seahawks pass defense at this point? Um, my uh, my quarterback that I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do and I and I hope he can throw for an entire game is is Ben Roethlisberger. Um, he's currently the 19th ranked quarterback. Uh, he's facing the awful Tennessee Titans defense who's giving up the 27th most points to fantasy quarterbacks. He just hasn't had a game where he just air, airs it out the whole time. Like if it's the 27th they, most points, is that isn't that like Sorry, sorry, sorry. The, they're the 27th worst at giving up points. They give up the 27th oh, okay. most points. Sorry there if I missed up there. So like every time Ben airs it out for an entire game, he puts up huge numbers. Everybody's been putting up huge numbers against the Titans defense um who just seem really leaky for whatever reason. Um, I, I know that they kind of shut down Josh Allen a couple weeks ago, but other than that, I mean, they've gotten, they got lit up by Gardner Minshew for three touchdowns. Uh, Kirk Cousins threw three touchdowns against them. And Deshaun Watson was the number one fantasy quarterback last week who threw for four. Um, Ben Roethlisberger, he obviously has the weapons. He gets Deontay Johnson back this week. Um, so we'll be able to see what that offense looks like with their full repertoire back. So he's, uh, I have him in, the, I think, uh, the third ranked quarterback in my rankings this week. Um, I, I think he finally explodes. And that game should be competitive enough to 5-0 and o teams that they should be, um, both offenses should be high scoring where neither team will be able to slow it down at the end. Yeah, and you brought up our rankings, so I'm going to go ahead and plug those while you did. Um, all of our weekly positional rankings are available on our website, thefantasyfootballsackos.com. We also do have flex rankings available. They are free. We do not have any paywalls. 
of any kind on any of our content. We are just doing as much as we can to try and reach you. Um, and so, yeah, Alex has been ranked all the way up at three overall. I have been ranked at ninth. Um, I guess I think he's going to have a good week. Don't get me wrong. I think he is a top 10 play. I'm just concerned about the fact that they seem to score points in bunches. Like last week, they put up 38. And yet Ben only had, what, one touchdown and 10 fantasy points. It's just, it's, I wouldn't be surprised if James Conner is, has a successful game on the ground as well against that defense. Um, yeah. And they do all well, this sort that's of the trickery weird thing about that offense, now, too, at the goal he, yeah, line. Yeah, like so, Chase Claypool got the rushing touchdown, and Benny Snell got a rushing touchdown last week. It's like, come on, let the studs stud. Yeah, come on. Those guys are on my bench. I, I need Ben in there, right? So it'll be interesting. Yeah. It'll be interesting. Um, I, I, What I'm counting on, I think that might end up being one of the higher scoring games of the week. I do think that Tannehill is going to be able to keep it close somehow, some way. The Steelers have a great rushing defense, but they don't have, uh, you know, they don't have one of the better passing defenses. So I, and Tannehill has been on an absolute tear this week or this, this year for that matter. Yeah. Especially um, if John U. Smith plays. Yeah. Right. Andy, that he finally has AJ Brown healthy again. So he's, he's right. looked great with the return of all of his studs as well. Um, another, some, somebody else that's a little bit lower down that I think you can get, there's a couple streamers I think that are out there, um, that you could potentially get up if you're in a tight spot at quarterback. Say if you're like me and you had your quarterback, uh, get bench for the foreseeable future and Ryan Fitzpatrick, <laughs> um, Carson Wentz, I think is a strong play against the giants. Giants opponents are completing, uh, almost 71% of their passes, which is fourth most in the league. Uh, they also just lost Adrian Colbert. Uh, he was ruled out with a shoulder injury this week, so that might be a little bit more leaky. Granted, there's not a whole lot of pass catchers there. I get that, but I think that maybe with Miles Sanders out this week um, that they're going to lean a little bit more on Carson, so don't be surprised if he has a good game. And then lastly, my last like of the week is Matt Stafford. Uh, the Detroit Lions going against the Falcons. I mean, I'm going to like whoever's playing the Seahawks and the Falcons every week. Um, the Falcons are giving up the second most yards per pass attempt uh, at almost eight and a half, which is right behind Jacksonville. And Falcons opponents are completing uh, more than 71% of their passes attempted, which is third most in the league. So you can pass yeah, basically on the only day. incompletions that quarterbacks have had um, basically they were all Kirk cousins last week. And it was when he was throwing three picks. Yeah. Well, and then the second half happened and it was like, it never happened at all. So there you go. Yeah. Is there any other quarterbacks you like, or should we go to our knots for a week? No, let's, let's go to the knots. All right. So my first knot is Jared, Jared Goff of the Los Angeles yep. Rams going up against the bears. I feel like he's the big obvious one this week. Um, the bears are allowing the lowest completion percentage in the league at 57%. And so we just talked about how the giants are letting opponents complete 71%. So what a swing that is there going against the bears. And then they're also allowing the fifth fewest yards per pass attempt in the league. So, I think that Goff could have some tough sledding against Chicago. Their offense hasn't really jived all that well. Maybe it will now a little bit more that they're starting to turn to Daryl Henderson in full time uh, with Cam Akers getting ignored and really Malcolm Brown sitting in the back seat. So maybe there's a little bit more efficiency there, but and cup dropped a couple of touchdown passes too. So I, last week, um, I just think that they're going to have a hard time against Chicago. So I am fading Jared Goff this week. Yeah, I agree. I also have Cooper Cup and and Bobby Trees way lower um, in the rankings as well to reflect the Goff ranking. So I'm, I'm totally on board with you. Um, I would like to highlight, you know, kind of the Raiders here a little bit. Um, and it, it kind of plays into Josh Jacobs and it plays into Darren Waller um, a little bit too. But Derek Carr... And they're going up against the Tampa Bay defense, who's currently number one defense in DVOA. 
um, by a pretty wide margin. You, everybody just saw what they did to the to the Green Bay Packers who were coming off of a bye. They just dismantled one of the better offenses in football um, or what we thought was one of the most you know better offenses, one of the more efficient offenses. Um, and they had their full repertoire of weapons besides Lazard. And they just, dis- I mean, they just dismantled them. The game was in control. It was 10 nothing. Two picks later, I mean, basically the game was over. Um, th- their yeah. defense has looked electrifying. Um, and we just had the Tampa Bay defense go for a ton fab uh, in the league that we're in together. Um, but yeah, Derek Carr I, I, is the one that I'm fading. Um, Tampa Bay is giving up the third least amount of points uh, to fantasy quarterbacks. Derek Carr is the 16th ranked quarterback so far this year. Um, I am considerably down on him and I'm, I'm down on all of the Raiders just because of how good that Bucks defense is. Um, the game is in Las Vegas. So the only way that they, that the Raiders play well is if the Bucks entire defense goes out and has a bender the night before in Vegas. That's the only way. Well, you couple Which all of that matchup, you, you couple the matchup issues with the fact that the entire Las Vegas Raiders offensive line was sent home because of COVID. Um, and so they could potentially have like one or no days to actually prepare, uh, given the fact that their last exposure to the positive tested or I don't know contact traced person was Monday. They could still theoretically play this weekend. However, they're not going to be able to practice or they won't be there all week. And so if you don't have any linemen, even game to game plan, it's just going to be hard uh, to try and be competitive, let alone against what could be the number one defense in the league um, this year. If, so if I could go I'm out absolutely limb, with you there, I'm going to say yeah. that if the Raiders don't have an offensive line that Josh Jacobs and Derek Carr will not perform very well this week. Can, can we make that a board bet? <laughs> oh, no, I'm, I'm good with you on that. Um, okay. And then the last, the last f- f- fade I want to bring up, uh, man, it's not even as much about the matchup as just what I saw. And what I saw was a big old hot heap and pile of Blandy Dalton. And uh, (laughs) man, did it look just how I remembered. Nice, hot and steaming and real bland. Um, I just can't believe that they looked that bad against the Cardinals defense who were giving up the eighth fewest points to quarterbacks. Um, Washington is 21st. They got Chase Young. I'm just not, I'm not real excited to see Andy Dalton try to do football. And I'm real nervous if I have any of the Cowboys players on offense on my team. Um, so you're, yikes. so just for clarification, you're, you're not writing Andy on your Woody like in Toy Story. Um, no. Also, I would uh, just to, just to highlight some Dallas Cowboys offense issues. Obviously, since since Dak went out, it's it's deeper than the quarterback. They threw fifty four times um, on Monday, which is a ton. Um, but their offensive line is so hurt. You know they they put so much money in their offensive line, and basically they've had to replace everybody. And so when a strength of your offensive line deteriorates like you got to be worried about Zeke I know they threw 54 times but Cooper Cooper had seven catches for 79 Lamb had seven for 64 Zeke had eight for 31 last week Um, all of a sudden you're looking at no Schultz no Gallup there's like you don't want to really start it's really hard to start anybody Washington's giving up the least amount of points to wide receivers they're giving up the ninth point ninth amount ninth least amount of points to quarterbacks and the only reason it's ninth is because of Kyler Murray having a couple of rushing touchdowns they don't give up passing touchdowns and so that that whole offense could look really rough especially if Zeke's going to keep fumbling this weekend yeah hopefully that doesn't continue anymore I what a what a game man um yeah let's move on to running backs hot or not uh, running backs that I like this week. I'm going to start with Aaron Jones of the Green Bay Packers going up against the Titans. 
Uh, I think that he is absolutely going to explode uh, Texans, against not the Houston. Oh, I'm sorry. I, Aaron Jones of the Packers going up against the Houston Texans. Uh, there you go. Alex and I both have him ranked in our top three at the position this week. The Texans are giving up the most rushing yards per game at more than 175. And they are also giving up the most yards per rush attempt at five and a half yards per rush attempt, which just boggles the mind. And you have to think that Aaron Jones is probably above average compared to all of the running backs that they have faced thus far. So I don't see that number going down. Um, I think he's going to have a day against the, the Texans. What do you think? Don't you? So last weekend was like one of the lowest scoring fantasy football weekends. I have I have no factual evidence to to back any of that up, but it just seems just like making hot takes. I no, it's not. It, I mean, there were so many teams that had under 100 points that are usually in like the 120s um, in, in the leagues that I play in. Um, it just seemed like across the yeah. board, running back points were way down. And so what usually happens when people have a down week the following week? they freaking explode. Um, and so it would not be surprising to see Aaron Jones have a, have a, have a game uh, this week. So I, I agree with that. Um, from there's not a whole lot of like I, Ronald Jones, as an example, all of a sudden he's had three straight hundred yard rushing games. Um, he was, a, he was one of our favorite sleepers before the season started until they signed Lenny Fournette, And it's like, Ah, uh, can you hop on the the Ronald Jones train? And I think you're pretty happy if you did uh, with that fifth round pick. Um, he he's been outstanding. Um, Todd Gurley is another guy that I'm that I'm really high on this week. Um, he has been surprising. I I know Jason, you don't really you have not liked him the entire year, but. I mean, the, the numbers kind of speak for themselves. He's the, the, been the 13th best running back so far this year. And it just when it seemed like he wasn't going to be doing a whole heck of a lot, like last week was the perfect opportunity for him to have a big game against the Vikings and he didn't, but he had the second most carries he's had in a game this so far this year. And he's had all of a sudden the last two weeks, he's had three and four catches. Uh, he had not had over two um, the first four weeks of the season. He is a guy that I think is going to be great. Um, the Detroit Lions are giving up the 28th um, most points to running backs. They got destroyed by New Orleans a couple weeks ago. They've given up you mean at the least sixth 14 most points. points. Do I? Yeah, you flipped yes, it again. They're allowing the 28th <laughs> most point. Like, yes, I'm reading it back. They're the 28th you know worst. They're the worst, 28th worst rushing there defense, giving up points to, you know. Anyway, Todd Gurley, Detroit Lions. Uh, I can see him having uh, like a top six week, top seven week. Um, I have him ranked at six. Um, I would not be surprised to finally see him go off with a with a better coaching staff um, now that they've got rid of uh, just an awful, awful uh, coach. So. Uh, they're being more aggressive. They're using Todd Gurley. Uh, so I'm high on him. Um, I actually, I don't mind Gurley this week. Uh, and I know that you said that he's 13th and he's the 13th best running back. He has the 13th most running back <laughs> points right now. But there's been a litany of injuries to that position. On average, uh, he is actually 19th in terms of his weekly average and uh for fantasy points at the running back hey, position. I think he's a fine RB2 on a week. T- I think he's a fine RB2 on a week to week basis. Uh, he has a, a very much a plus matchup going against the Lions this week. Um, I have him down as a like. So good, good on you. You actually, I'm with you this week. I'm not going to fight you on Todd Gurley. And then uh, Ronnie Jones, I agree with you too. I have him down as a like. Uh, the Raiders given up the second most fantasy points to running backs at more than 33 a game. I think Ronald Jones is absolutely going to have a day against the Raiders, especially if their offense isn't driving because their offensive line is home all week trying to isolate from COVID. So, uh, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised at all if Ronald Jones 
uh, continues to prove that he's the guy down in Tampa. A couple other guys I like. Um, go ahead and give me some of that Washington football team backfield against Dallas this weekend. The Dallas Cowboys are giving up 173 rushing yards per game. Only the Texans are giving up more at 177. And no other defense in the league is giving up more than 145. So they're giving up more than 30 more rushing yards per game than the next worst defense. Dallas is also giving up the second most yards per rush attempt. They're giving up more than five yards per rush attempt. So I'm just, I, I think that Antonio Gibson and even McKissick are both viable streaming options. If you're just looking for guys with floors, hopefully Gibson is turned a little bit more loose. You don't want to see another eight rushing attempt game for JD McKissick. If you are a Gibson uh, manager. Uh, and then my last, my last little group I like here, this is a group. The last person I like is actually David Johnson. We've talked about how bad the Houston Texans rush defense is, but I also uh, don't really think much in the way of the Packers rush defense. The Packers are currently giving up the most fantasy points to running backs at almost 35 points per week to the running back position of their opponents. And so I think David Johnson is in line for a very um, a very nice game, potentially fringe uh, running back one type score if he falls into the end zone. Um, so those are the running backs that we like. And with that, let's go into our not. Can I, Unless you can, got a can, comment. Can I add one what more? No, yeah, just, just one more. Uh, Devin Singletary, I think this is the last week that he's playable. <laughs> um, because we, we talked about it before the beginning of the season. The Bills, are their, their schedule gets so difficult. They're playing the Jets. We all know the Jets suck. And that's why Devin Singletary ah. will be like, you know, he'll, he'll be a solid RB2. He could be a fringe one this week, in my opinion, um, because he's playing the Jets. That's the only reason. And so if you have Devin Singletary, get him in your lineup and then please try to trade him next week because their schedule gets outrageously difficult and he hasn't exactly been great uh, to begin with. Um, yeah. Playoff schedule, Pittsburgh at Denver at New England. Um, no. Nope. So last week for Devin Singletary owners to have him and then go ahead and send him on his merry way. Yeah, I would I would literally I would trade every freaking Bills player right now be, and just hope that whoever you trade him to is not looking at the playoff schedule. We've all seen yep. what Josh Allen can do against a decent defense and it's not much. Um, so. With that, let's move on to some running backs that we dislike. Um, I'm going to start with, I have Jarek McKinnon written down, but it's, it might be, <laughs> it, it might be, you know, Mr. Hasty as well. It might be Jeff Wilson. It might be, who. it's just, I dislike the San Francisco running backs going up against the Patriots this week. One, because who the hell knows what that split is, first of all. Second of all, you're going up against the Patriots, which have given up through six weeks. The Patriots have given up just one rushing touchdown on the year. So it's pretty good. I'm I'm not seeing it for our split time, all the time, running backs. Good luck picking out which one potentially gets in the end zone. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I'm i a little worried about all of the 49ers, if I'm being completely honest. Um, but that's, uh, yeah, we'll talk about that a little bit more. Do you, are you nervous for McKinnon and company this weekend? Yeah, absolutely. You just never know what's going to happen in that backfield. Um, it's a potentially rough matchup that you just kind of outlined and the Shanahanigans, you just don't know. Um, I, I'm going to give you kind of a gut call here of somebody I don't like, and the statistics don't really back it up. Um, it's Chris oh, Carson. Boy. Uh, um, he's facing Arizona. 
Um, obviously, Arizona's defense has been kind of middling this year. They started out the season well, and then they weren't so good, and then they just destroyed Dallas on Monday. I The reason why I'm a little worried about Chris Carson is just he has not had the carries to really support what he's been doing. He's currently running back seven uh, on the season in half PPR leagues. His carries um, so far, they're coming off a bye, so he should be rested. And that won't be an issue in the, with the Cardinals coming on off a short week, which is always interesting. But the carries that, that Chris Carson's had, 6, 17, 14, 16, and 8, that's really hard to support a RB1 because the carries just aren't there. It seems like they've gotten away from being a run first offense and ha- with the emergence of, of DK Metcalf and then potentially signing Antonio Brown. Um, I, I'm i worried about Chris Carson uh, in our flex rankings. Jason, you have him ranked at 22. I have him ranked at 49. Um, and it's it's more of a gut call than anything that I think Russ just throws all over Arizona. Um, but yeah, that's... I, I don't have any statistics to back it up, honestly, because like they're a middling uh, defense when it comes to allowing fantasy points to to running backs. It's just a I don't know if Chris Carson has enough opportunities on a weekly basis to sustain it. So it's more of a season long call, but I think it starts this week. Yeah, I mean, if you look at it in the one game where he did not score a touchdown which is week three he had a single digit game I I mean not a surprise there Um, yeah I guess you know if you start looking at his scores you take the touchdowns away it's not like he's he has one game of 80 rushing yards but he is catching passes which are nice Um, six catches last week against Minnesota I mean that's going to bring up your floor if you're in any sort of PPR league, which I think standard is kind of going the way of the dodo bird. But uh, yeah, that passing involvement obviously needs to be there for Carson's value to be sustainable um, and that yardage. But Dallas of all teams is able to hold him to nine points. Yeah. And the hardest thing to do is to predict touchdowns. If he's going to keep scoring touchdowns, he's going to be fine. But in order to score touchdowns, you have to have opportunities and he's not getting the opportunities necessarily to score those touchdowns. It's just happened. So just something to be on the alert of. Um, Running the next running back I dislike this week is uh, actually one of my own in several leagues, and that is James Robinson. Uh, James Robinson of the of the Jacksonville Jaguars going up the going up against the Los Angeles Chargers this week the chargers are giving up the seventh fewest points to running backs this season they have back-to-back games with less than 50 or excuse me james robinson has back-to-back games now with less than 50 rushing yards and he managed just two and a half yards per carry against the lions last week i'm just a little bit nervous about um well game script for one because i feel like the chargers have a good chance of getting up early on the jaguars and then they're simultaneously allowing the seventh fewest points to running backs um i'm just i'm i'm nervous for a james robinson dud here and then he's on a bye next week as well so a little bit down on him is that why you've been trying to trade him to me i've been trying to trade Man. him in a lot of different leagues i mean he's <laughs> he's running back six right now and half PPR scoring. He has he's on pace for more than 60 catches on the season. Don't get me wrong. I think he finishes as a fringe RB one. Thanks to the litany of injuries at the position. Um, I uh, I'm just not real enthused with him this week and next week is a buy. So there you go. Yeah, I got you. Um, this next one I've been getting destroyed on Twitter for um, which we kind of already alluded to which is Josh Jacobs Um, I'm a running back 23 this week Um, I have him ranked at 50 in flex rankings Jason has him ranked 23rd in our flex rankings Um, again offensive line going against the Bucks defense Uh, somebody has a good point on here which is like you know name 22 better running backs than Josh Jacobs. And I'm not doing that. I'm just saying I 
you saw what they did to Aaron Jones last week. And if Aaron Jones didn't fall into the end zone because they ruled Aaron Rodgers down at the one, he would have had a pretty rough week last week. Um, and I think that Aaron Jones is more talented than Josh Jacobs is as a running back. So if you line up all those same factors, um, I, I think this this gets ugly for the Raiders um, this week. And so for that reason, I'm I'm way down on Josh Jacobs. Yeah, I'm not going to fight you. I mean, with the whole offensive line kind of sent home for the week because of COVID. I mean, I don't know how they're supposed to prepare and figure out blocking schemes for him. So that plus bucks equals fade Josh Jacobs this week. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, Let's move on to pass catchers. The first pass catcher I like. Uh, I'm going to start with T Higgins. The Cincinnati Your Bengals guy. are. Yeah, I love I love me some T freaking Higgins. Man. <laughs> um, he's so free. He is. So if you're in a dynasty league, go get you a piece. <laughs> even you, I don't care if you even overspend a little bit. You know, I'm just saying T Higgins. He's going to be around for a while and he's real good at football. Um, the Bengals are playing the Browns this week. The Browns are giving up the third most fantasy points to receivers. So like. If you are desperate, I would even put in AJ Green after his experience last week. Like that was a long time coming, I think, for AJ last week. Um, the Browns giving up the third most fantasy points to receivers. They are the middle of the pack in uh, yards per pass attempt at 15th best. Um, they allow the sixth most pass yards per game at more than 270. Um, I just think that the, the way to beat the Browns is through the air. I think that they have a good rushing defense. And so teams try to attack them through the air, even though they're kind of just middle of the road at it. Um, but so people go that way, which is why they've allowed the six most pass yards. However, they're still in the middle of the road, uh, as far as yards per pass attempt. Um, she Higgins, obviously I think has a lot of rapport with Joe Burrow. He is third on the team in targets with 38 so far this season. Granted, he did not play week one, so that number should be in the 40s. Um, However, even so, those 38 targets are more than Julian Edelman. They are more than DJ Chark. They are more than Devontae Adams. They are more than T.Y. Hilton. He has more targets than Jerry Judy. He has more targets than Justin Jefferson. He has more targets than Juju Smith-Schuster. And he has more targets than Mike Evans this year. And he is T. Higgins, and he might be on your waiver wire. Do you know who else might be on your waiver wire is Travis Fulgham. uh, Give him to me! We briefly talked about um, on some waiver wire show that we might have put out a couple days ago. Um, I have him ranked at the ninth wide receiver this week, um, which seems yeah. outrageously high. Um, oh yeah, you have him ranked. You have him ranked at twenty-seven. Uh, so, just as a point of reference, uh, Travis Fulgham uh, has played in three games this year for the Philadelphia Eagles. And in half PPR, he has scored 12.7, 26.2, and 16.5 points. Um, that's really good. And I just think he's going to continue to be really good. The, the, the Giants have given up the 10th most fantasy points to wide receivers this year. Carson Wentz has to throw to somebody. Uh, With Elshon analysis Jeffries already been like ruled that. Out. <laughs> Zach Ertz is out. Dallas Goddard is out. There's literally nobody else to throw the ball to. And so if you think Carson Wentz is going to be good, then by default, Travis Fulgham has to be good. Oh my God. Okay. Right. Do you disagree? I don't disagree. I just think that maybe they could just like try to make, Carson Wentz beat him with literally anybody else because that's what I there would try is to nobody do. else there's nobody else there's Ward Ward's okay it's like Montgomery Ward's it's like the value they closed 
<laughs> They're literally out of business. Uh, so will he when all those receivers come back off IR. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, RIP. Uh, hey, speaking of that, Deshaun Jackson is evidently supposed to be back this week. And Alshon is anticipated to make his return against the boys next no, week. No, Alshon's out. Oh, yeah, yeah. Next week. Correct. Yeah. Giggity goo. All right. Give him some pitching some Travis Fulgham. That's a full send. I love it. Um, yeah. The next pass catcher I like is Keenan Allen of the Los Angeles Chargers going up against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Jacksonville giving up uh, eight and a half yards per pass attempt, which is the most in the league. Keenan Allen has. 50 targets, which is eighth in the league overall. So if you're giving up eight and a half yards per pass attempt, Keenan Allen has 50 targets through six weeks. That's like eight some odd targets a game times eight and a half yards per pass attempt. The guy is like at a minimum looking at 70 plus receiving yards. Just if the law of the averages continue. And then guess th- I love this. Guess how many stats or how many targets the next uh receiver on the Chargers has behind Keenan Allen's 50. Um I'm going to say it's Hunter Henry with like uh 25. Oh, well I meant at receiver, but uh Mike Williams oh, has Mike, 22. So Mike Williams 20. Okay. 22. Um, yeah, I, it's unbelievable how Herbert and Keenan Allen have absolutely gelled. And I think that they're going to team up and take advantage of Jacksonville this week. So if you are a Keenan Allen manager, I think you would absolutely love starting him with confidence this week. Um, he's going to be one of the biggest values, I think, this year for anybody that drafted him because he was going so late because of Tyrod. Tyrod. And then it's true. Uh, what do you think of Keenan? Do you think he's going to do okay against the Jags? Yeah, I mean, everybody does well against the Jags defense, it seems like. So I would have no reason, like, tr- trot out Herbert as a as a starting quarterback this week, trot out Keenan Allen. Yeah. Um, the, the biggest thing there is just going to be trying to figure out what their backfield looks like. I know you're higher on Justin Jackson this week um, than Joshua Kelly. Um, so that, I mean, start your studs and then try to pay attention to see what's happening in that backfield. Um, my next, um, guy that I'm, I'm somewhat high in is Brandon cooks. Who's kind of had a reemergence after his donut week four against Minnesota, where he literally scored zero points, three targets. Absolutely wonderful. Uh, since Bill O'Brien got fired, um, Brandon cooks has 17 catches for 229 yards and two touchdowns, which is in two weeks before that, uh, in four games, he had 10 catches for 138 yards and no touchdowns. And his average depth of target has gone considerably further down the field than it was to start the season. Cause they're running more play action. And Jason touched on that in previous pods. Um, I haven't ranked to 29 this week um, at wide receiver, which is probably a little bit low. Um, he's been outperforming that. Um, and even with just his two weeks, he is the 27th ranked wide receiver this year. Um, we had him pegged as a borderline wide receiver two to come into the season. And it seems like he's going to progress to that number uh, after having a slow start the season. Um, Green Bay is giving is relatively stingy on defense, but uh, Brandon Cook seems like he's kind of turned a corner uh, under a new coaching staff. Yeah, and I did talk about earlier about how, um, you know, just talking about how Mike Evans really underperformed last week and it might have had something to do with Chris Godwin coming back. I also should not play down the fact that Jair Alexander is an absolute man of uh, a defensive sure. back and was probably, you know, and so I think that that also had a lot to do with Mike Evans performance. Um, maybe, you know, maybe he's not on cooks. Maybe they have him shadowing he's Fuller. On Fuller. And so yeah. if he's on Fuller, then I think that Deshaun's going to just be pounding the ball to cooks. If you look at that target breakdown, it's like 
Fuller has more than 30% of the targets in that offense. And then uh, Cooks has like in the upper 20s. It's like 27 or 28% of the targets. And then after that, the next guy's at like 10. So the ball it's probably Darren Fells. is just, <laughs> yeah, the ball is just going to those two guys. And so I want to start whoever Jair Alexander isn't on this week. Um, my next pass catcher I like is TJ Hawkinson of the Detroit Lions going up against the Saints. Uh, Hawkinson has four catches and 50 yards in each of the last three games. And he now it goes up against the Saints who are giving up the most fantasy points to the tight end position. Um, I think that it could have the potential to be a high scoring game. And I think that he will continue his four catches plus 50 yards, which gets you to, I mean, seven or nine points, depending on half or full PPR. If he's lucky enough to fall into the end zone, you're looking at 13 to 15 points. Uh, out of your tight end position, which I think is a W in most cases. So I think that uh, TJ Hawkinson makes a, uh, it is, it might have a nice week this week. So, yeah. And I, I just want to highlight Jamison money Crowder one more time um, for being on one Dude, of the worst money? offenses in, in football. Um, it's amazing. He's had seven catches in every game that he's played uh, this year. And he just deserves some sort of credit for, not sucking in the worst offense in football. And I, I don't I don't want to go into details on this. Joe Flacco is still his quarterback and he's still getting seven catches every week. It's outstanding. He's had 10 or more targets in every game he's played. Dude is just a machine. Currently wide receiver 24 uh, in, in half PPR uh, and he missed two games. So got Buffalo this week who's been uh, fine. But yeah, Jamison Money Crowder, he's going to have seven catches and he's going to have 10 to 13 targets because that's what he does every week. Are you worried at all about uh, Brashad Perriman coming back? He did have eight targets in his first game back. No, 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 not at all. Jamison Crowder is the guy there. All right, let's move on to not pass catchers. In uh, week seven, my first dislike is Allen Robinson of the Chicago Bears going up against the Rams defense. The Rams are giving up the fewest yards per pass attempt in the league at less than six. Uh, The Bears are 23rd in passing yards per game at just over 220. I think those two things combine for a very mediocre Bears passing game performance. And Allen Robinson maybe having a less than superb week. Um, granted, you know, he's really the only person that uh, Nick likes to throw the ball to. Um, I just, I'm just not enthused. I'm not looking forward to uh, Allen Robinson going up against that Rams defense this week. I hear you on that. Uh because Jalen Ramsey is a freaking beast and nobody catches passes on him unless you're Michael Gallup, but then you get called for offensive pass interference. Shout out to week one. Um, I, to be honest <laughs> with you, there, there is not a whole lot to like hate on from a wide receiver perspective. So even the Dallas wide receivers that you want to dislike this week, if they're going to throw that many times, they're still going to put up some sort of stats. I mean, I'm way down on, on Amari Cooper and CD lamb. Uh, you're more down on CD lamb than you are Amari Cooper. I get it. Uh, it seems like Dalton was more focused on Cooper um, and, and it's bared out in targets, even though CD lamb still had what 10 targets or something like that. I, um, there's nobody that I really hate. And just for me to plug plug the website, the fantasyfootballsackos.com, you, you can see all of our rankings there, of course, uh, as we've already mentioned multiple times. D- Darren Waller for me is the biggest fade because um, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are really good. Um, I'm also really fading this week the fact that George Kittle um, is facing the Patriots. And what did Darren Waller do against the New England Patriots? Uh, he had two catches for nine yards. 
the Patriots always take away your best weapon, and that's George Kittle, and that's why I'm down on George Kittle this week. That means Debo's going to go off, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, unless... Uh, oh, wait, they can just match up the Defensive Player of the Year on him and shut him down from last year. <laughs> so, Patriots are good, man. Yeah, it's crazy. Debo Samuel had more than 60 uh, receiving yards last week, but it was all yak because those passes were generated behind the line of scrimmage. Just unbelievable, you know? Yakety yak, yak oh, don't man. talk back. <laughs> um, I mean, honestly, you already touched on him. The only thing I was going to say was the Dallas receivers against the football team. I'm just not really enthused about their ability to produce. You know, I know that Amari Cooper has 65 targets, which is second overall in the league. And CD lamb is at 50, which is by far the most uh, targets. Well, not by far, but it's the most targets for a second receiver in an offense ahead of DJ Moore, who's behind Robbie Anderson. Uh, but he's ahead of DJ Moore by a whopping two targets. Um, Ooh. but I'm just, yeah, I don't know. I'm just, it was real concerning and everybody, you know, I, I just all off season, you just heard about how replaceable Dak Prescott was. And that's why he didn't get a contract and why he was franchise tagged. And I tell you what, he doesn't look very replaceable right about now. So. Yeah, I love that their players are already in like an upheaval saying Mike McCarthy can't coach, even though everybody knew that after he got fired from the Green Bay Packers. Um, and I, I don't want to regurgitate anything else that, that you haven't already said, but um, we are both down on Cooper Cup and Robert Woods uh, because of the Bears defense matchup, who are just absolutely phenomenal. Um, and so I, I would not be surprised to see both of those um, wide receivers struggle. Uh, and for them to focus more on Tyler Higby um, against their linebacker group than throwing to the outside. Um, so not saying that Tyler Higby is a sneaky play this week, but I would not be surprised to see him score a touchdown. Wonderful. We're, we're going to leave it there, and that's going to bring us to... Newsy stuff. <laughs> Alex, we uh we recorded our uh, waiver wire show on Sunday night because of uh, my uh, significant other's birthday. Katie turned a whopping thirty on Monday, so we did not rec- record on Monday as usual. Turning and thirty so, is the end of your life, man. The hangovers get worse. Like everything <laughs> hurts a little bit more. Like I always thought that 30 was like the old cutoff line and now like once you're past 30 it's not the old cutoff line but it still is the old cutoff line sorry go ahead uh i was i still feel 25 i'm just like in a 30 like i just want to stop aging like i'm just i'm okay here you know that doesn't happen just keeps on going um but we were talking on sunday night about potential landing locations for Le'Veon Bell um, because it was up in the air where he was going to sign. And since then, he has signed with the Kansas City Chiefs. This is going to be his debut week this week. I just want to I just want your thoughts on what you think it's going to mean for Clyde Edwards Alaire and that offense. Do you think that Edwards Alaire is still going to be a uh, I guess a a low end RB one. Do you think he's going to drop to uh, an RB two now with Lev Bell joining the squad? What do you think about it? Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see him both be RB twos probably the rest of the way. There's no way you sign Lev Bell without guaranteeing that you use him. Clyde Edwards Hilaire looked so good against the Bills the other day. They just ran him into the ground. Yeah, and he, he had what like 160 yards. Um, so I mean, obviously it limits either of their upside. Now I will say this, if, if Kansas city is going to run the ball as much as they did against the bills and their offensive line looked unbeatable, um, on the ground. And that's the second time because they absolutely dominated the Texans week one. I, I don't know how it's going to look. Obviously Daryl Williams is going to have zero value going forward. Um, 
for the, the limited usage that he had. Um, I think Lev Bell will be in there on, on passing downs for pass protection. Um, yeah, I, RB2s, it, I don't, you know, both are playable. I think uh, maybe not immediately this week for Lev Bell, although I could understand if you want to start him. Um, but definitely next week when the, when they face the, the Jets, uh, Lev Bell is going to definitely score a touchdown or two in that game against crazy Adam Gase, who still somehow has a job um, after getting destroyed just again on Sunday. Um, so, yeah, I, I think I think there are RB2s. I have no reason to think that they wouldn't be. You got to think that any time that Andy Reid gets inside the five against the Jets, it's just going to be turn around and hand the ball off to Lev Bell and watch him just throw it in Adam Gase's face. Like, man. Um, yeah, I, I just, I'm just glad that Clyde Edwards Alaire scored a touchdown in the first week because uh, he hasn't scored one since. And I, I guess I'm not sure if he ever will again uh, with Lev Bell <laughs> signing, you know, he, he scored on Monday and it got called back for a hold for a holding penalty. And then Travis Kelsey caught a 10 yard touchdown pass and I lost. Sorry, not bitter. <laughs> yeah, it was, and it was a short yardage play that he uh, did score on and then it was called back. Yeah. So I'm just yeah. saying. You know, I just wouldn't be surprised if those type of plays migrate from him to Le'Veon Bell. And I think that Le'Veon Bell, if he just even if he turns into just the goal line back, like there's going to be value there for the goal line back on probably one of the top two or three offenses in the league. So. You hate to see it for Clyde, but I, I don't think all is lost. I th- still think he's looking at probably at least 15 touches a game. Um, I just think that Lev Bell is going to get that short yardage and goal line work. And with that, it's going to take away from him a little bit. Um, yep. <clears throat> anything else you'd like yeah, to the, add? The, no, I, I wasn't. I, I, the only other big news uh, was today with, with Adam Schefter breaking that uh, Antonio Brown is looking to sign with a team and that the Seahawks are pursuing him. Um, I know that he's currently a free agent in a bunch of leagues. Uh, what would you bid on him? Oh, gosh. Uh, what would I bid on Antonio Brown? He doesn't want to go to the Bears. in. He- I currently have a bid in on him. I'll let you guess what it is, and I'm probably going to remove it, but I'll let you guess. I will guess that you have a zero dollar bid in. No, it's actually a dollar amount. Oh, I would. I'm I'm, I'm going to cancel it and make it a zero dollar bid or like a two dollar bid. Probably. I would guess that your bid is probably between 10 and 20 percent. Yeah, I, I have eleven dollars on him, which is just over five percent in our league because we have two hundred bucks. Yeah, like if, I, if you um, were to go to the if you were to go to the Seahawks, he'd be the wide receiver three there. And so I don't know how much value there would be. We know he's not going to the Bears, as you mentioned, because Nick Foles is there, is as he put it. Yeah, and I don't understand for a guy that is serving an eight game suspension isn't is still under you know review or whatever for an additional off field issue that he had and could potentially be suspended again is being picky about what team he gets signed with part of me thinks he might be lucky to get signed anywhere at all i guess the adam schefter news that came out today i didn't really think was news because I've known that this would be the case for his suspension all year, that it was just sure. eight games. And so it's the first eight games of any team in the league. If it's a bye week, it turns into nine. But that's been the case all year. It's just that it got pushed out again this week. And so for whatever reason, it just becomes news and everybody's all, oh, my God, I got to go sign Antonio Brown. Well, all the teams knew that he could be in reinstated now and nobody signed him yet. And he's only two weeks away. So you got to think if there was this big line out the door to go get Antonio Brown, 
maybe they would have signed him already instead of waiting for now two weeks until he can play again, you know? Um, And it's really less than that. If you want to talk about uh, like in terms of time to get him to your city and in your facility and practicing and learning, like if you wanted to sign the guy and not, and give him a shot of like having a chance to play that first week and know what he's doing, you're going to want to sign him at least like now. Um, right. And the Seahawks are looking at him, but they don't, they don't need him. What's he going to do for them? They already have, they're already trying to get Josh Gordon reinstated as well. So, and you have DK there. I would be so upset if I was a DK manager or a locket manager. You know what my advice is? Literally go to those managers in your leagues, see how tilted they are about the potential of Antonio Brown signing there and see if you can get him because DK should not be really sold in really any sort of trade. Like it would have to be, I would have to get the most one-sided trade in history to give up DK Metcalf. Like I am, I don't want to give him up really for much of anything in any league, in any format. Um, right. And lock it is a wide receiver too. That's going to have wide receiver one weeks. Like, I don't want to really give him up either. I would just, I would, I would probably see if I couldn't trade for either one of them, especially DK. I don't think DK's role changes. He's still going to be that end zone, red zone threat guy that he is. Um, I think it would probably hurt Lockett more. Yep. But so you're, if you're I put putting a, zero dollars on him. I, I, if I'm bidding anything and I thought about actually just picking him up last week or maybe even the week before. And I I think I may have even drafted him in our league and then dropped him at the outset of the season. Um, If I'm bidding anything on him, it's a dollar or two just to get ahead of the guys that are going to bid zero. And it just sucks because honestly, I feel like there's a 70% chance that he would just sit on your bench for two to three weeks and clog a roster spot. And then you end up just dropping them anyways. And then you're just pissed that you ever picked them up and that you wasted the fab on him. Cause why isn't he on a team already? Every, the league already knew that he could be signed, but nobody signed him. So. Yep. Yep. I'm with you. Oy vey. Ah, good old AB still, still rattling the cage of the NFL. <clears throat> All right, with yeah, that, since, let's head over since, to our social. A A B and Lev Bell have left the Steelers. They've done nothing, and the Steelers um, still have a bunch of talent. It's crazy, yeah, and arguably they, they've literally done nothing. Yeah, yeah, arguably one of the best receivers in Chase Claypool. I mean, <laughs> he's God. so good, dude. He is so good, though. Mapletron, Mapletron might be the best nickname. That I that's like the best receiver nickname I can remember in recent memory. Mapletron. He's Canadian and he has all the same measurables as Megatron. So they call him Mapletron. It's glorious. I can't believe you didn't even know this. It makes me hate him even more. I can't you call yourself a fantasy analyst and you don't even know the guy's nickname is Mapletron. How would I know this? Like who's calling him that? Everyone. It's a thing. Like it's a thing that people know. (laughs) Whatever. Oh man. All right. Well, we're transitioning to our social media page. Please follow us everywhere, guys. We are at the FF Sackos on all social media platforms. If you're watching on YouTube, please go ahead. Hit that hit that like button. Please subscribe. Please ring the bell so you get notified every time we post a new video for you. And then uh, if you're listening on any sort of listening platform at all, 
We are everywhere. We're on. I try. I think I have us on every freaking podcast platform there is. If I don't, let me know and I will. Um, but please like and subscribe to us on those as well. And thank you guys so much. Have a good night. Bye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Football Sackos podcast. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at the FF Sackos.